Oh, I am having a bad hair day. Um, <laughs> so I thought today what we do is we would look at um, whatever colors that you may have, but what I've asked the um, brand ambassadors, et cetera, that we would look at the uh, seven opaque colors and the pyrroles and the perylenes. And then if there's something that you want to see and you have with you, love to see that as well. So I have seven. Do any of you use the opaque colors right out of the box? So Gabriel shaking yes. his head. Rick, how about you? Rick's going to unmute. Yes. Yeah, I've used the gouache the, from the 22 colors of gouache. Okay, so Rick uses the gouache. Bill, I how use about the you? Buff titanium and gray titanium. Gouache? Uh, I I thought. Uh, were you referring to watercolors or gouache? Right now, watercolors. Okay. So the so the seven that we have as watercolors are bismuth, bismuth vandate. We have chromium green oxide, Indian red, Venetian red, English red earth, graphite gray, and lamp black. Those are the seven opaque colors. And then for gouache, they're all opaque. But I thought we would look at watercolors today. And then for perylenes, we have, make sure you get all the perylenes. There we go. We have perylene violet, red, scarlet, green, and maroon. And then for pyrroles, we have crimson, orange, I don't have with me, we also have transparent pyro orange. I don't have that one today. Pyro red and pyro scarlet. So I thought that's what we'd look at today. Okay. So what makes a color, what makes a color opaque? Alice. I'm sorry. I said, tell us. I, ah. I, the the layering is what works for me, but I don't have any of the opaque colors in my uh, palette normally. So it's always about it's always about the pigment. If it's, it's no the density. Pigment, I'm sorry. Is it the density? It's about how the pigment was created. It's not that you can't mix colors and get to get to an opaque, um, or that you can't put a whole lot more pigment. Um, for example, in the gouache, we even make some transparents opaque. But for watercolor, right out of the tube, it have it's all about the the pigment that you use. And what are the characteristics of that pigment? All the characteristics of that pigment also were designated by the manufacturer and creator when they made that. So whether it's staining or non-staining, well, um, granulation is probably nothing that people go that developers go after. It's probably an after afterthought um but the the staining the transparency the light fastness are all happen at the time of creation john what's the opacity of the pearlescent white almost all of the pearlescents are transparent oh opacity yeah they're almost all transparent in fact they're all transparent that surprises me why is that? I, I've just used it in in cloud banks uh, with other color, and it seems the pearlescent part of it seems to uh, overwhelm the other color. I ah, it's interesting. So if it's so, that's a good. That's that's. Do you think that's I, the shimmer? 
the shimmer from the uh, the from the particles shimmering back, so it appears to be more solid. I yeah, I use it or I have used it in some evening sunset type uh, situations at the beach, and it I love it. Uh, but I've always thought it was opaque. So the way that you can test that, Bill, is you put a black line down and you put the product over the black line. And do you see it or do you not see it by itself? So not with not not in combination with something else. Um, is probably one of the best indicators. John. Yes. By the creator, are you talking about the manufacturer or the way the universe was put together? Um, I'm talking about the manufacturer, not, not the manufacturer. The creator is the uh, person or entity that created the color. Not necessarily manufactures it, but created it. So for example, Ford creates a lot of colors and Ford uses the colors, but there's other, other companies that create color for industry um, that then sell the colors to industry and industry will use that. Um, okay. So the pigments themselves, pigments are just a, a, they're just a marvel in chemistry. They're, they're, they're truly, if you just want to read about them online, it's just, they're so interesting. Um, some of them are, um, are used in the electrical industry. And so they have to be non-conductive. Some are used in places where they have to be non-corrosive. They're, they're not really, they're not made for, they weren't developed for the fine art industry. We're just really lucky to be able to use them, uh, but they were, they were invented for industry at large. But is that where your chemist come in play? Yeah, the chemists come in play in terms of looking at and evaluating the colors, and then certain at certain times, not every um, not every pigment that we use for watercolor was um, originally developed to exist within within a water vehicle. It might have been a solvent vehicle, so then we have to teach it how to behave within a within a watercolor vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 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 painting these out, and you and I'm not showing you what I'm doing. So let me switch. Well, I hope you're having fun. Oh, I, you know what? <laughs> the, the, the the fun is really talking with all of you. That's really the fun of my day. I thought it was going to be a surprise. <laughs> ah, there we go. So this first one is the bismuth mandate. And this is the chromium green oxide. And this one is the Indian red. So I think next week I'll be able to show you the finished um, C-Lab. I think you'll like it. It's, it's pretty interesting. So that's Venetian red. It's interesting to have opaque colors when um, watercolorists look for the transparencies and the layering um, qualities. How, Carolyn, how do you use the opaques? I use it as a, a final blocker on areas yeah. where I need to develop a density. Um, so you're relying on it blocking out something, you know, in, in its background to bring, um, uh, something forward, I suppose, in the picture or to actually set something back, I suppose, when you're actually creating a darkened zone, um, in an area, um, sometimes you sort of, cause I do a lot of layering. So when my glazing layers get to their, um, end, there's some areas you want to block out. Um, in the image from under detail. So you use the um, the um, non-transparent layers to actually help you uh, block those areas out. 
Awesome. And you use the lamp black? I don't use black very often at all in any paintings. Um, I think black I use only when I'm specifically chasing a dynamic of black, black, white um, as a contrast. And often I don't necessarily use a black watercolour. When I'm chasing black, I often use a black ink instead. Oh. I don't even put black on my students' palettes. I only give them neutral tint. Okay. <laughs> so they don't make everything muddy by accidentally using too much black. And how 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 did I like the neutral tint? How do they use the neutral tint? What what's the what is the purpose? Uh, that okay, so they often use neutral tint as a toner to deepen a color. So they'll make a mix of colors and then deepen it um, with the neutral tint, which is what it's amazing for. Um, or alternately, because they don't have a um um a, a non granulating black on the palettes I give them, they actually do it in layers and create a dark. So it's not truly a deep black, but it is a beautiful dark, which is slightly on the blue side with neutral tint. Um, so yeah, it usually takes two or three layers to get a neutral tint to be dark enough to appear to be black on a painting. Yeah, that's awesome. I've seen neutral tint to either bring the tone up or the tone down of a color. It's, it yes, works, yes. It's great for that. Yes, and neutral tint makes amazing olives with the yellows. Very cool. So this is the um, graphite. So our graphite is synthetic graphite. So this is synthetic graphite. Um, and this is the lamp black. Somebody was asking about about lamp black, I think it was in Dubai, they were asking about um, what color do you have that comes from soot? And it's lamp black. That's why they call it lamp black. They would put lamps under canvas and the, the soot would go and go to the top of the tent. When that was all done, they would then beat it with a broom. They would collect all of the soot and that's how you get lamp black. Fantastic. So they don't go around the um the old fashioned lamps in the streets in England to collect it from the, the from the glass anymore. Yeah, now it's now it's pretty easy to do it synthetically <laughs> and, and, and have it perfect. Fantastic. Uh, but it's our darkest color. Um and then kind of Bill, when you were talking about the pearlescent, the pearlescent, um we get a hundred plus on the on the L value for light because it's almost like shining the photospectral photometer at a mirror. It's just, it's just so much light that comes back. So every one of them is just, uh, we don't, we don't even list the L value because it's, it's well over a hundred. Yeah. It's just that it's, it, it's the, um, uh, is that why it appears yeah. opaque? That's why it appears opaque because of the light coming back at you. Yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're, if you use them each one separate, I can do that next time. I can pull them out. Um, if you use them separately, you would see that every single one of them is transparent. Where where everything changes is when you start putting colors together, and I think that's the magic you do as watercolorists. But it, it changes. I mean, it ch just changes everything because you're putting each one's a variable. And now when you do two, you're getting different characteristics. For example, one could be granulating, one could be non-granulating, one could be semi-transparent, one could be opaque. It's just multiple, it's just two things, but now you've done multiple variables. And it's it, and it's how the magic of those actually comes out and how you see it that becomes so, so very interesting. But alone, like we're doing here, you can you can really see the characteristics of the individual color itself. So pretty incredible. Okay, so these are the opaques. And... Is there something common about why they're opaque, John? You know, it's, no, not really. Because if we look at, um, no, not really. It's It's how, it's how industry, it's what industry wants to buy that really dictates pigments. Um, so if it's a quinacridone and industry doesn't want to use it anymore, then they just go away. If it's a 
um, a thalo, which is they use uh, tens of thousands of tons of it. Um, it probably will never go away. Ultramarine blue will probably never go away. It's they're really used in in industry in mass. Um, but somebody sometime for some reason had in their mind how these were going to be used because they wanted somebody to pay for them right it's john can we talk about some of the other colors that are considered a semi-opaque such as buff titanium um, we've got gray titanium. I see like wisteria and lavender. Those are kind of like in my mind, those are my opaque colors because I don't have any of the ones that you are showing right now, but I do have those and those are my go-to opaques. So the, the, yes, we can. The three families that we have that we list would be the transparents, which we have quite a few the semi transparents which we have a great deal of, and then the opaques, which we have just a very small sampling of. And we have a very small sampling because opaque, when you finally get to opaque, you're at the end of your story. That's what Carolyn was saying. You know, at the end, she might use an opaque. So this is not where the majority of artists would um, go. And if you did, you probably learn pretty quickly that you're going to get to opaque very, very, very quickly. Um, if you're doing a lot of glazing, et cetera, you're probably sticking with the um, the transparents. Um, but yes, what questions, if any, do you have on the on the semi-transparents? The semi-transparents are a big user in my studio um, yeah. because of the particular colors. They're, they're favorites, um, Naples and titanium buff, titanium gray. Um, they're, they're genuine favorites and they and the other thing that's, um, the semi, um, um, transparent is something that Joseph Zabuknik talks about and it's called a milking where you actually put a wash of a semi transparent over a whole block of area in your painting, which subtly sets it back. It, it almost like puts a fog over that area of your painting. That's interesting. Do you have any 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 examples of that, Carolyn? And if not, can um, you show next week, I, I can show you some of those next week because I actually do that quite often. Do a um a milking, um, and I do it with my students when they develop a painting with too many weird colors, <laughs> and we bring it together by doing a milking of a one color over the whole painting, which then um turns them um into um a new tonal range because of the milking color we put over. So we could, we could put a, um, a like a lemon um, yellow mixed with white as a milking over, or we could do it with a powdery blue as a milking over. And it actually then subtly brings the painting and all those weird colors back together because of the milking. Oh, that'd be kind of, that'd be very interesting to see. I'd love to see that. Yeah. But um, Joseph describes it really well because he does he does a, a milking over some of his city scenes to give it the appearance of you know that sort of misty, uh, light early uh, sort of late evening or early morning fog sort of thing, and he uses the milking as a um, atmospheric um, effect on his work. Oh, very cool! Yeah, his work is beautiful. Yeah, amazing. Named the master for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's in the water in Australia, but there's just a lot of phenomenal artists in Australia. Yeah, we like we like to play. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Paraline Maroon, and this is Paraline Violet. So very synthetic. Sabine, can we go over to you for a second? Can you show us what you're doing, Sabina? Okay. Um, I just make a layer with the graphite gray and very thin. 
and then I go with this gray uh, a little bit thicker from the pigments. I go inside and get and I make some trees. And now it just must dry and I can get some trees and snow over there. And it's just um, one color. I think, I don't know, I, I must see when it's dried so I can go in again. That's some deep granulation. That's fantastic. With the water, the granulation comes more out. And you see in with here, very thin, there is not so much granulation and here uh, a little bit more pigment and the granulation comes out very nice thank you yeah thank you for sharing don i also see geo's uh sheet ready of course i love to see geo's too yep <laughs> yes don also Sorry to all for my my voice. <laughs> and, uh, this is a um, scale from a opaque color, and uh, this is a combination for create the beautiful mixing green. Uh, only change the the sequence uh, when I use, and uh, in this case now I started with pure uh, red, um, really red. Uh, for on the left, I started only for bismuth vanadate and uh, venetian red for creating this beautiful uh, opaque uh, dark orange. And in this case, I, I use the three uh, red, venetian red and uh, English red earth, uh, Indian red for creating this brown with a little point of uh, graphite gray. And in this case, I use the, um, uh, the the green oxide, chromium green oxide with a little point of graphite gray and lamb black and create this beautiful combination. And then the second line is a light line. It's the same, but I use the, the green and yeah, bismuth vanadate with a little point of um, graphite gray and lamb black. The, all the red for create this only with the lamb black and the green with light and dark. In this case, I create uh, this uh, texture with graphite gray. Usually, John, I use uh, not any time, but I use the, the graphite gray for create the first layer of my pointillism before the lamb black for the black background and for create the, the light. And after the graphite gray, I use the lamb black for complete the whole. And after 40, 50 layer, <laughs> arrive to my black background. When I use only the the, the brush, but all, usually I use the, the sea sponge for this. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Nice, nice, nice colors. Nice job, Gio. Okay. So let's see. Sabina. Ash, are you painting? Yes, I am. I'm a little mm -hmm. off topic though. We're talking oh, about- Oh, that, that's, that's okay. Okay. Um, I heard that we were gonna be talking about perilines today. Yep. So I have literally three perylene. Well, perylenes and pyrrols. Pyrrols, yeah. Sorry. Um, but here I've got just two two colors and then a pop of yellow. I've got perylene green for the trees and then perylene scarlet for the, it's kind of going for a Christmas tree thing here. Oh, and I don't yeah. know if you can see it, but I've got a little star at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. That's beautiful, Ashley. Thank you. I love trees. Mm -hmm. 
me and Sabine are on the same uh, brain. <laughs> yeah, <wave. laughs> very close. Yeah. Yes. She does this way better than me, so I'm just kind of uh, learning from her. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And let's see. We have Gabriel. Gabriel, how about you? Yeah, uh, I've been working on this piece. Uh, and this is our little a cute little carousel that's here in San Diego. And it was first built in um, New York. And then it was shipped to L.A. They didn't want him in L.A., so they shipped it to Coronado. <laughs> and it made its way to Balboa Park. And so, like uh, Caroline said earlier, um, by me adding some of these opaques, I can either push uh, the things forward or push the things backward. And so, uh, some of these little windows here, and I'm using Gio's brush, his master brush, to do this little fine tip stuff and what I'm trying to do is just build up some of these lovely details and whatnot. And so it's a little bit lighter than for some reason, uh, maybe because the sun just came back out. But uh, I have right here is the uh, lamp black. And then I have right here the English uh red ochre and then i have the vin uh the uh, i can't even say that one the, this guy um, venetian red venetian red so um i built up these little areas that need to come forward so this part of our little roof needs to come forward so if I take that opaque, let me clean my brush off here, and I can take that and just build this to come a little more forward. And um, that's how I will uh, I will use the opaque colors. Is I need these areas to either come forward or recede. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. You bet. So on Facebook, Raffaele, why are opaque colors the most creamy in watercolor ranges? Is it possible to manufacture other less opaque or not opaque colors with the same creamy consistency? I don't know. Yeah, I have to think about that. Um, Prapple, hello, Prapple. Prapple's on a ship, but he's heading to Australia. He might come and visit me, maybe. <laughs> and then Buffy. Buffy, would that be an example of using an opaque over transparent? I think if you use an opaque over transparent, you wouldn't, you would, you would no longer see the transparent. Um, okay. So let's see. So these are the um, perilines. Perilines are, are quite bright. They're quite beautiful. They're nowhere as bright as the ones we do next, which are the pyrals, but certainly within the, the colors, they're, they're, they're quite beautiful. This is the maroon. This is the violet. This is the red. This is the scarlet. And this is the green. So those are the perilings. And so next we'll see the pyrals. And the pyrals are going to be way more, way much more bright. Giovanni, do you have the transparent pyro orange or Gabriel? Do one of you or any of you have the transparent pyro orange? It's the only one I couldn't find in my on my rack. 
Transparent pirate orange? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. I've been that's been I've totally put aside uh pyro orange and I've been just using the transparent. Let me grab my palette. And why is that? Gabriel, why do you like why do you like one over the other? Sorry, I stepped away. Were you saying something? Yeah, I said why do you like why do you prefer one over the other? Well, it's uh one is definitely transparent and um, I've been playing around with some skin tones uh yeah. with the pyro transparent pyro orange. I definitely could tell a huge difference between the two. I did hear you right, right? You Transparent. You yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because we were so talking I'm... about opaques, and then yeah. So we wanted to show the uh, opaques, then the paralines, and the pyrol. So I'll show everybody the the pyro orange, if you can show them the transparent pyro orange. Or you can right. do actually, on yours, you can do both to, oh, that's that's cool. Yeah, I like that. I'm actually taking that transparent pyro orange right over some swatches we did in green, and you can see how transparent cool. it yeah. is. I also like how this this paint works with a uh, paper that has a texture. Because it really sinks down into the textural paper. I love this color because I can get it. Uh, it stretches like a really nice Band-Aid. Uh, the mm -hmm. bandwidth it can get really light. It's like it's like so light. It's not even showing up on there. Uh, it can get really nice and light, or I can get a real nice gob right down on there. Look at that range. I think I think by having that nice range, kind of like Quinn Gold Deep, Quinn Gold Deep, I I feel that it also even stretches out quite a bit, and um, yeah, I definitely suggest grabbing that color. It's a great color for pumpkins. Yeah, and for trees that are like uh. Oh, like the, what are those maple trees? Like the Canadian ones? Yeah, maple. We were talking about neutral tint before, and a beautiful color is neutral tint with perylene scarlet. If you mix the two together, you get the most brilliant maroon. Repeat that, please, Caroline. We were talking about neutral tint before, and yeah. if you mix yeah. perylene scarlet with neutral tint, you get the most beautiful deep maroon color. Giovanni, do you have both of those that you could show that? Absolutely, yes. Ready. I've Thank got you. it too. I can do it too. Could you show it too, Ashley? Yep. So, uh, so while they're finding those, this is the pyro orange. You can just see the difference. Let me show you the difference.
I mean, the Perlines are are very, very, very nice. But if you want off the chart bright, it's the the pyrroles are just off the chart. This is the orange. This is the scarlet. This is the red, and this is the crimson. Whereas this is the red for the um, perlene. Bright, but nowhere as near as bright as these. And then while they're showing that, Gabriel, maybe I can just stack you up with a question for Buffy and then we're done seeing Ashley's and Giovanni's. We'll come back to you. Buffy says, having a hard time phrasing my question, but thinking of how I could start using the gouache opaque colors in my artwork on Gabriel's carousel, painting for example could he add just a few lighter leaves opaque over a dark section of the leaves to add some bits of light and the answer is yes the so answer. there's there's areas like in this part of the carousel where i had a nice little dark section in the actual picture here's the reference photo and then in that photo, there is that dark section of the tree. So here's the dark section of the tree, actually. And now here's that nice dark, uh, oh. here's that nice dark that's in there. That's on top of the, of the actual transparent watercolor, okay? And then I needed this area to recede. So this is back behind there. This little chunk of dark opaque needed to be back here to push this part here forward. Look at this. We're showing volume and we're showing how things have gravity, right? Like as things get darker. Now, now this though, this is transparent watercolor but it's so thick and buttery right mm -hmm. out of the tube. This creates the wonderful dry brush effect when my sky is already dry, okay? And so this is not opaque. This is thick, thick paint right out of the tube with very little water. This is opaqueness. So the different? Cool. Yeah, very nice. Thank you for answering that. You bet. So let's go back for a moment to Ashley. Yeah, look at this like vampire. I don't know. It's all I can think of. Vampires. <laughs> Have it. That's really pretty. Isn't oh, it a beautiful color? Yeah, that uh, is cool. It's almost like you, uh, blood red. I don't know what my deal is today with blood and vampires, but just uh -huh. bear with me. That's I just really love the mix. The the blue toning in the neutral tint mixed with the perylene scarlet just creates this really awesomely gorgeous color. Very nice. Thank you, Ashley. It's That's almost beautiful. reminiscent of a deep scarlet. Yes. Awesome. Well, as Buffy would say, new uh, new colors unlocked. I think that's what Buffy says. Uh -huh. Yes. Thanks, Ashley. That looks fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Caroline. And Giovanni, how about you, please? Yes. Yeah, I create uh, this beautiful maximum light mixing and maximum dark. Very, very strong. Very, very beautiful mixing, Caroline. I this is it. really unique. I really love it. I've only recently explored that one and I keep going back to it. Yeah, for, for the light, the, the, the mixing in the light with a lot of water, I created very, very beautiful shade with it. With this and the, but it's a very strong color when well, you know, the must on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're welcome. Right. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you. You're welcome. And I saw um Angela. 
Yes. Angela, are you are you painting? Can you show us what you're doing? Yes. Yes. Please. All right. Let's add Angela's spotlight okay. here. And Angela. Oh. Let me find the other one. Angela. Falcon. <laughs> there. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. I mixed some transparent colors with some uh, opaques to see what happened. Like here, there is um, uh, uh, quinacridone on gold and the pyrrole orange, as you asked at the beginning, this, this area is the pyrrole orange. And nice. from here is the transparent quinacridone on gold. But then I applied the bismuth band-aid and it covered the um, it covered this part. You see, it covered, and it mixed okay with the pyrrole. But if you are not careful, it will take over. So the bismuth is really um, a, a beautiful color, but as it is opaque, it will. Yeah, you, you told us. You see, if if I go into the orange, it will take over, especially if you do it very thick. So that's my experiment with these two. And then round here, <clears throat> I explored the Indian red, which is this. It's a beautiful uh, dark red, very, very beautiful. And the pyro crimson is this bright one, one of the pyros. I mixed everything, I'm sorry. This is the lump black. And this is perylene green. Very cool. But in perylene green and here also, but here I put uh, some uh, bismuth van day and you see also that it's it's a very powerful color. Yeah. You see how it, it pushes the other colors away. Oh yeah. I like it. And especially the way that, um, uh, what is her name? Um, um, the one that demonstrated last week. Very. Yeah. Sorry? Terry Waller. Yeah, she was calling it a bully color because it yes. pushes everybody else around. Yes, I love the way she explained how it behaved. And and then I started to feel curious. And uh, you see, I think it's it's a very, very nice color. So you can use the, the opaque colors, uh, as Caroline said, when you want to block certain areas, or also when you want to, to push other colors away. Or you want to, yeah, to this one to take over. So the bismuth is, is a really beautiful color. And the black also, I like this lamb black very much. And perylene, this, there is some perylene violet here as well. Perylene is a very beautiful color. I think it one that Caroline suggested to mix with neutral tint. Is that the perylene violet? I think so, yeah. So here only you need to, to draw a few lines to get here some floral, some, some leaves and some flowers. Don't you think so? That this is very like a, like natural green or nature, a bit representing the nature. Very okay. nice. See that, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Angela. Thank you. Yeah. Anna, how about you? Are you painting? Yeah. Hi, John. Hi, everybody. Hi. Good, I I am. I I was doing the. I don't have any opaque colors, but uh, I was starting to do, but I'm not done, and I got crazy with the. Uh, so I was <laughs> starting with my, from my dot cards. I dabbed mm -hmm. a little for the, um, opaque. And I'm letting them dry to draw the other line and see about it. So, but I ha I do have a bunch of um, semi opaque and semi transparent. So I was doing that. And here's your try of the pyrrole orange versus the transparent. And very nice. I have to agree with Gabriel, but transparent uh, or I just love it. It's beautiful. It's just super nice. And right now I and Caroline always has the best suggestions of. And I was trying, but I don't have Caroline. Um, uh, Scarlet. So I'm trying um, alisarin crimson mm -hmm. and um, sorry, um, I cannot see. And right now I'm doing permanent red here uh, vertically, but mm -hmm. I'm going to be trying all my reds because also Ashley's uh, tries. I, I really like them. So I think they I think they all make beautiful maroons. I think neutral tint awesome. is the way to go. <laughs> neutral tint. We go through tubes and tubes and tubes of neutral tint in my studio. 
I am I am loving it. It's it's just uh, really really pretty. So I'm I'm trying a few, um, and I'll follow Ashley's um, lead. I think she did a beautiful swatches there. Very nice. Nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll make some vampire colors. Vampire colors. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> We're encouraging yes. Ashley to make a book of all of her swatches for the year um, that we can buy from her. What do you think? Oh, yes. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I, actually, I went through, because you said that last week, I went through all my sketchbooks and I put sticky notes on the ones I want to make into a book. So, Yay. I'm looking yeah, forward to buying it. Awesome. Thank you, Anna. Oh, thank you, John. How about you, Erkin? Hi, John. Hello, Hi. everybody, dear friends. Hello. Uh, John. There you go. I have a pyro red and a Hansa yellow. Uh, in order to get uh, nice orange like this, like this one. And I use uh, this orange oh. in my paintings. This one I painted the, uh, last week. Hansa yellow, uh, orange, uh, made with Hansa yellow and pile red. Same here. Very pretty. Very beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Now I'm playing again with the same colors. Again, well, the same yeah, like that uh, mixes here. Yeah. That's interesting. That's it. Thank you for asking. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, very nice. nice. Thank you. Nice Thank you, working. dear friends. Thank you, dear friends. Very beautiful working. Thank you, Angela. So, and I okay. also saw Sabine just now created a uh, swatch with uh, with our oranges. If I s could, you have it there, right, Sabine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um. Yes. Uh, here, the first was the pure red, and I mix it with the. Um, chromium green oxide yeah and interesting was um it comes out uh, a little bit aubergine here and when i get water on it it looks like that's amazing very nice it comes, it comes out under the color and um so i here is the bismuth mm -hmm. with a little bit red and I get a watercolor mm. stick with the pure orange and it's a very very strong color goes here in the green and it's uh, and it's it's just sunshine in your eyes you look <laughs> I like mm -hmm. that. yes i love it and i love it to the green it's there amazing it I, I love this area yeah and you see the, the granulation here in the green it's amazing awesome this reminds me of the background of a shirley trevena painting very nice thank you very cool yes yeah. Thank you very much. Ethel? Yes? Could you let everybody know what we're doing on, I believe it's the um, the next Friday, oh, the Friday after? Correct. So if they want to, they can also join in and have time to, to pick colors, et cetera. Mm -hmm. OK, let me just put everyone here in the gallery. So yeah, inviting everybody to join us next two weeks, the next two Fridays since we are already in a holiday season. So we're gonna have uh -huh. a special holiday paint along for the next two Fridays beginning next week. That is December 15 
in December 22. So what's going to happen, we've invited our brand ambassadors and our support artists to share with us during live um, a painting. So they're going to choose a subject within the holiday theme and we'll share their process and we'll share about what inspires them perhaps during the holidays. So we invite the rest of you to join us beginning next week. It's going to be fun. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, thank you. Great. So with that, I wanted to thank all of you for all of you for being here today. I I love seeing all the the colors. Um, that's a Laura McCracken right there with all of the reds that we have, and that's a that's a Stella Canfield. Um, so good seeing you all today. Thank you for joining today. Um. It's good to be back in Washington, Washington, even though it's cold. Look, see you all tomorrow, hopefully, if not next week. So thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.